Don't you know that from coast to coast where there's dope, there's hope, where there's dope, there's hope. Shush. Wait, is it lit? Uh, don't you know? Oh, welcome, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls. Cats and herbal dogs. Tea. Cats and dogs. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. A Animals, a body. Ooh. Welcome. Yeah. You are rocking with. Your boy Earth Tone and PZ. This is the Herbal Tea Podcast. Sure is. Debut episode. My episode niggas. EP one. We made it. Oh, we shit. fucking made it. We Has here, it been y'all? a trip? What's up, man? Welcome. <laughs> Thanks for coming out, rocking with us. Um, we definitely happy to be here. It's been not a long time coming, but we definitely been putting in some work in preparation mm-hmm. to give y'all something special. Mm-hmm. Um by Lou of the Herbal Tea Podcast. This is the show. For Q Plus Artists, by Q Plus Artists. I myself, I go by the name of Earth Tone. Um, I am a Q Plus Artist. Um, you know, I've been doing my thing for a little minute now. I yes, probably I, I probably came out in my music around 2014. That was with the debut of the Gmail EP. Facts. Y'all can go check that out on Spotify, Tidal, all your streaming platforms, Apple Music, all that good stuff. All right, all right. Um, but yeah, that was my introduction to the scene, um, and I've been rocking ever since. I put out two other projects since then, New Balance Mixtape, and then I just released Gourmet last year, so you got the Gourmet EP. Um, and Well, the Gourmet the album, the EP. Um, it's a full length, so y'all could go check that shit out. And yeah, Bars. that's me, your boy Earth Tone. I'm from Jersey. Most of y'all know. I'm definitely based in New York City. I've been out here for about three years now. Um, that long, that yeah. flew. Time flies, right? Shit. That's how it goes, man. You had a lot of fun. I've, I've enjoyed it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm we, we Jersey right across the water, so it ain't yeah. a big transition. But right. it is. I mean, New York City is New York City, it's so transition. it's one thing to be from Jersey and commute there. But it's one thing, you know, to actually live here and be in the scene and the mix and shit. For sure, um, for sure. But yeah, man, I've been doing music for a little minute. And um, one fun fact about myself, I'm gonna give everybody: I was actually almost signed to Grand Hustle as a writer <gasps> producer. Whoa, back around. 2008. A lot of people don't know that, but we ain't gonna get into all that just yet. That's just a fun fact. Hold that. But yeah, man, we're gonna be bringing y'all all types of goodies. We're gonna be shining a light on the community. Particularly the Q Plus community as well as our allies. Right. Um, right. And like I said, it's a show for us by us. You know what I mean? We're bringing it to that old FUBU motto. If you want something, you want to see something, you got to do it yourself. So Absolutely. that's what we're here to do. But it's not just me, it's my homie. I got to the left of me, IK Pizzle. Yes, sir. Let the people know a little bit about yourself, man. I actually wanted to say that I feel kind of betrayed that you ain't tell me that you was almost signed to Grand you see Hustle. Here? You got a little situation. tidbits. I mean, like, you see the plaque in the right. crib. Like, where you think did. I get that from? It's just, you ain't never asked what the capping. story was. So, I thought you she know, was just really capping. Like, but at the same that. time, anyway, this is our <laughs> dynamic right here. This is what you've gotten yourself into. I am IKP. Most people call me PZ. IKP stands for the infamous king of positivity. Oh. I'm also a Q plus artist. Okay. You know, born in Brooklyn, raised in Norfolk, Virginia. Hey. 757 area, okay. seven cities, if you're not familiar. Now, because something in the water festival is popping, now everybody gonna know, really know what 757 is, but that's like the home of Missy, Pharrell, Clips, people like that. So that's kind of like my ilk and things of that nature. Um, what could I say about myself? I'm a Marine Corps veteran. I was served for five years. A vet. Ooh, Vets. that's not light. Don't just skirt not over light. that. You're right. Like, You're right. I'm a Marine Corps veteran. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's I did that. Like, it is. Okay. You know, I'll that's be getting up. that Marine Corps bag. I got out 2008 and, you know, I had a good time, but, you know, I am a vet. And, you know, that's just what it is. I'm a vet in the game, and I'm a vet... In the game. In the game. You know what I'm saying? See how that work? Yeah. All right, here we go. And um, I've also been doing music for a while, about since 2010. Um, I have three albums and two mixtapes to speak of. You out here. You out here. So I've been out here really, really putting in work and doing my thing. My latest project... Ethos, which is an anthology, a 2010's anthology of all of my work in the past decade. We're going to discuss that later in the show for our segment in these streets. We'll mm-hmm. get more details to you about that in a hot little second. Yeah. So now you got a little bit about each of us, um, our projects. Now we're going to tell you a little bit about how we kind of met, like where our story began. So I came out and, you know, 
pretty much in my music as a Q Plus artist around 2014 with Gmail. And around that time, um, that's when I met uh, Swanee. Shout out to Swanee River. Um, Shout out. A, a fan of mine had actually put me on to Swanee. They were like, yo, he has a radio show. He highlights artists. He definitely fucking with your shit. You should check him out. They sent him my music. And we kind of linked that way. And ever since, we've been rocking. And he came out to one of my first shows at SOBs. At SOBs. And he brought IKP and Billy Hood. Shout out we to Billy Hood. Came. We all rolled through deep. And yeah. we just met. Like, we just early, met And this was summer. early. Like, I had just kind of, like, hit the scene. So we kind of linked up early in the, mm-hmm. and you know, my career path. And, facts, um, facts. We've been rocking ever since. And before you know it, we ended up getting on a joint. Our first joint was what? Uh, I'll be, be on, on it. it. And that was initially just supposed to be some, you know, Swanee was doing like a collaboration. He was, yeah, like it was a like collaborative a, uh, album. Yeah. Compilation album. Yeah, yeah, something like that. And it was supposed to be on that. But then we, I mean. Because the, the vibes, you know what I'm saying, the source from it was dripping so goddamn yeah, hard. It was crazy. People was kind of feeling it all over the place. We went and we shot went the video we on that cold October day. It was freezing. It was cold as hell. But we, it was gave, dope, though. we gave a hit, and from then, we've been, we've been on rocking. Popping. We, we ended up putting it. together a whole a full-length project, full length introducing project. the Alliance. What was that, 2016? 16. Oh, man. And before that, remember, we dropped the mixtape, the prequel. The mixtape, yeah. We went hard down. That whole we went crazy. That was a hard summer. It I was remember a whole that. We went hard, crazy on a on a pride circus. We did all of those. Oh, we did all of that. We, we ran hit every barrel pride mm-hmm. and performed. Yep. That was that was hard for sure. And three music videos later. And on top of that, remember when we won? When we got nominated for the best urban EP yeah. for the independent 2015 music Independent Music Awards. Or we made. We, I mean, we made some. We waves, made a little so just, splash. You know, some light, but you know, that's kind of where you know the foundation of where our relationship started. So for sure, you got Earth Tone and Peasy, and we are bringing y'all the Herbal Tea motherfucking podcast. Now you might hear like Herbal Tea, like what the fuck is the Herbal Tea podcast? Well, I'm wondering. Everybody know what tea is. You spilling tea, mm-hmm. so you kind of we we getting into the talk, the words on the street, spilling not too much tea. of the rumors and the catty shit. It's gonna be a bit little salacious, but we more talking about the informative shit, the shit that's going on in the community. Yeah. You know, the lifestyle shit, the shit that we do and deal with every day. Absolutely. Um, of course, it's the music. So we got the music. We're going to be breaking down music, particularly music from artists who identify as Q+. Plus. So Openly. Q+, plus artists, yeah. as well as allies. So anybody who ever shows some support to the Q+, plus community in some way, shape, or form, um, they're eligible to be reviewed on this show. So we're going to be taking music, albums, EPs, singles, whatever, from all different genres, um, not just hip-hop, uh, R&B, soul, all of that. For sure. And, you know, like we said, it's a show for the community, by the community. Absolutely. And a lot of y'all might hear us throwing around this term Q+, plus a lot. And everybody's asking, like, what, what the fuck is Q+, what, is what does Q+ that mean? Break that down for so, a player. I mean, every time you hear people refer to the queer community, it's like the LGBTQ, they tend to be adding, like, another letter onto yeah. the shit, like, every year. It's like, <laughs> it's a lot. We get every it's a big year. community, it's a spectrum. And that's cool, but that's a little cumbersome to say all of the time. Like, LGBTQ, LGBTQ, actually, people refer to us struggle with that, because you could tell, you could look at somebody and tell, like, they really had to rehearse that. So yeah, it shouldn't be it that. Easy. It shouldn't be that. You know, it shouldn't be that. It's not that serious. It's, it's serious, serious, but it shouldn't be that difficult yeah. to kind of. You know, what I mean, it shouldn't be like a test. You got to take a test to learn how to say the shit right. It's like, right. come on, man. And then I wanted to separate that from just the artist community as a whole. Right. So yeah, we all fall under the rainbow, but it's not just the lifestyle. We talking specifically more so about the art. Right. So right. that's why I said Q plus, and then we. I want to put a positive spin on being queer, on being LGBTQ. So it's like exactly. we Q plus artists. It's like a badge of honor. We superheroes out here. I'm not right. ashamed to say like, oh, I'm a Q plus artist. It's not something, it shouldn't be a derogatory statement. And I yeah, think that's yeah. kind of the issue with a lot of people when they're hearing it. they like, oh, I don't want to be put in a box. I don't yeah, want to just yeah. be a gay rapper. I don't want to... You don't have to be. The only body, the only person who could put you in a box is you. You know what I'm saying? If we hear your music and you only rapping about one thing, we're going to put you in a box based on your music anyway, no matter what you calling yourself. Right. So it don't matter. Like, we just putting that Q plus in front of it as a way for other Q plus people or people in the community to be able to easily identify those artists that they might be looking for. Because especially doing the research for this show, when we looking for Q plus artists, where do you go? Like, how do you? What do you go to Google and type in if you're looking for like a Mickey Blanco or Case the Killer or you know somebody that might be in that range? And you like, 
I don't really know the artist's name, but where could it, like, what's the category? What group? You know what I mean? How can yeah, I look for it? Yeah. So Q Plus is just a way of kind of, you a know, sure it is grouping us together, but you have different types of artists that fall under Q Plus. So you yeah. got trap Q Plus artists. You got Q Plus R&B artists. Mm-hmm. You got Q Plus soul artists. You got, you know, Q Plus... Pop artists, experimental all of that shit. Is is Q so Plus is many. not the genre. It's more just a, a added, you know, a just added an identifier, just to let you know. and that's a, just like a shorthand. If anything, it's yeah. a badge of honor, yeah. as I like to say. Absolutely, and, you know, we wear it proud out here, and it's not for everybody. If you don't want to put it on, we're not forcing it on nobody. Yeah, no, it's just, no. it's just something we like to use to kind of put a spotlight on the Q Plus artists that's doing their thing in this community, and the ones that's looking to support and don't necessarily know where to look. So we hope to be a resource and a hub, and that's kind of the main objective behind this whole thing, you know, behind this whole podcast. So we hope that's what everybody get. And it's community-based, so we need y'all to participate. We need y'all artists. If y'all got songs coming out, projects, hit us up, let us know, at herbal.t.pod. And we definitely going to check it out and listen to it. And we want to put a spotlight. Like, that's the whole premise. We want to yeah. put it on display. We learning about the shit ourselves. So, you know. I put it on display. Hey, hey. You came to catch this wave. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I didn't come to play. Yeah. <laughs> All, All right. right. So, with that said, we're going to give y'all an idea, sort of a summary of how the show going to run down. So, we're going to start off with the album reviews. Facts. Yes. And like we said, we're going to be taking Q-plus artists, singles, projects, EPs, anything of that nature. All that music, we want to take it. We're going to listen to it, sit mm-hmm. with it. You know what I mean? Really digest it, break it down. And then we're going to bring our opinions and our thoughts to you digest guys. Digest that shit. So, we're going to review it, take the projects. And we're also going to be looking at the allies, as I said. So, it's not just going to be, you know, people who identify as Q+, but it's going to be people who, you know, openly support the community in some way, shape, or form. Whether that be, you know out publicly speaking or through that music or, you know, featuring a Q-plus artist right, on their project. Right. Any kind of support that shows they stand with us and not against us, then they're considered an ally and we're going to feature their music on the show as well. Yes, sir. And then also we're going to have the next segment Which headed by the homie. Sh- sh- IKP. Peasy. Please call me Peasy for short. I don't want you to remember <laughs> a whole bunch of fucking letters. But... This is Man Peasy right here, and I'm going to be hitting you with Indie Streets. This is a segment of the show where we get into the community business of what, you know, Q-plus artists or, you know, people of the LGBT persuasion are doing. So I like to say that I'll be covering the latest news, trending bits, and local stories straight from these streets. Oh, straight. But not straight. Where my ears always be. You got your ears got the curve. My I mean, that's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing time. you always out here. You I'm got your curve. Out Even here. injured, no injured. Like, you out Listen, here. They can't keep you out the streets. Can't no leg that's what I'm injury hearing. stop me. You know what I'm saying? I okay. had a little surgery here, but, you know, I'm still here. Okay. Still here okay. in these streets. And that's what I'm going to be bringing to y'all. Okay. Sounds good. So, we got the show. We're going to be highlighting Q+, plus, the art, the community. Mm-hmm. And then we also going to be highlighting our favorite pastime. Well, a lot of our favorite pastime, mine's in particular, that 420, that ganja, ganja, that ooh, ooh wee, sticky, wee, icky, icky. Sticky, icky, icky. We're going to be bringing you to the smoking section where we're going to be highlighting, you know, different things that have to do with the 420 culture, the cannabis right. culture. Um, from the business side to, you know, how do you consume your weed to, you know, different stories about getting high and shit like that. It's just going to be all types of fun, informative, and it's all going to be brought to you via the Herbal Tea Podcast. So we hope y'all enjoy. Sit back, relax, be in tune. Get engaged with us. We definitely, like we said, we want to stress that it's a community-based show. It is. And it's about the artists. It's a show for the artists by artists. So we want y'all to, you know, be engaged, interact with us, and let us know what you think. If we, you know, we doing something that you don't like, let us know. If we doing something that you fuck with or you might want to see something else, let us know. But we're going to get it going and enjoy this ride. With that said, you know, we can't do this without y'all. We wouldn't be here without you artists. Absolutely not. So please, this is definitely all about y'all. It may be our thoughts, our opinions, and our viewpoints, but this is definitely for the community yeah. and by the community, like Absolutely. my man Earth Tone said. If we ain't got no music to review, the shit ain't gonna work. It's so not really y'all gonna go work. in the studio, get these projects done, and get make the shit, shit good because we ain't taking it light, we ain't pulling no punches. Nah. You know, we artists ourselves, we know how much goes into mm-hmm. it, and when shit is lazy, we gonna know. We gonna know. And we gonna let you know. So... Without further ado, let's get into these motherfucking reviews. Let's get into these reviews. How we gonna rate these reviews, though? Oh, let's, what's man. what's so, that situation gonna be like? Let's see here. So, I mean, 
you got the premise of the show. We mixing the weed with the art, with the right. Q plus, with the culture. So we figured, why not have some fun with this charting system that we use? Yeah, yeah. The whole system is broken down. We got six different grades we're going to give you. Okay. And it's going to start from lowest... You got that dirt. Yeah. Now, if you, you, I mean, that's pretty self explanatory. You got that dirt. Word. Your shit is in like the zero to 15% range. Yeah. I probably, I probably don't like one, maybe one joint off of your shit. And I'm definitely not playlisting anything off mm-hmm. of it. You know what I'm saying? But that's kind of the the low end. Hopefully, we don't got to give out no dirt. Like, that's Hopefully not we don't. the objective. That's We're not, not out here not trying it. to give people dirt. That's embarrassing. We don't want to have to do it. It's embarrassing for us. So don't put out no trash. Or yeah. if you do, just keep that shit in your, your, just your hard drive. Just move forward and go back drive. in don't the Don't put booth. it, don't stream it. Go back in the booth, <laughs> come a little harder, and then, you know, let everybody else yeah. know what you're doing. It's yeah. all about the glow up. Exactly. We all evolve in here. Exactly. But a step up from dirt, you got your Reggie. Mm-hmm. Now, if you ever smoke some Reggie, you know the shit, it look kind of different. It smell a little different. It ain't really, you know, you, it's smokable. Really you could smoke it. It's but, passable. It's filler. Uh, it's not really that crazy. You buy in the fifteen to thirty percent range, which you got when you got that Reggie. So that's the first two. The next step above Reggie is your mid. So you know, all my smokers, you know what that mid is. Sometimes you get that mid. You on like a super budget. Your yeah. pockets might be tapped. You get your little gram of mid. It'll get you through. You know what I'm saying? You, you can through. smoke it. You get, yeah, you're a nice little situation depending on what your tolerance is. Yeah, yeah. But um, you know, you ain't gonna be writing home about it. You know what I mean? It's it'll it'll do the job, it'll but it ain't the, the shit job. you go in the seat. You know what I'm saying? Some shit you gotta, you know, you just it's mid, it's cool. You listen Sometimes, to it. Sometimes it's like an off and on thing. Sometimes mid could be okay. Like it could work. It has it, it, it has, has a its ups and downs. That's why the range is like a thirty bit wider. To, thirty to sixty percent time. Yeah. You know what I mean? About that range. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. a little about average. Mm-hmm. That's average, some average trees. After that, what we got? We got got that beautiful, beautiful loud. Mm. Loud is something my man Tone knows a lot about. Yes, you know what I'm saying. So very well. That is informed. the going to be the sixty to seventy five percent range. So you know, loud. That's just it's that loud. The, it's the, that loud. You know what it is loud, when you hear it. When you smell loud. it. Yeah, yeah. And so you know what I'm saying. It tastes delicious. That's when you get out of that average range and yeah. you're like, all right, this shit. Now we're talking about something right here. Mm-hmm. This is that, this is that ooh wee. This is that loud. This, this is that shit you want to hear. That's that medicinal. Mm-hmm. That's that mm-hmm. medicinal quality. That's what you want. Exactly. And then you want to take it a step above that, the next grade. Whew. It's getting hot. It's getting hot. You got that fire. Fire. You got that fire. I mean, you know, fire, everybody knows what fire is. That's like yeah. a universal term. Whenever you're yeah. referring to some shit, and you're like, yo, that shit was fire. Yeah. You get you a little nice little piece of action, you know what I mean? Be like, yo, he had that fire. Yeah. Be like, yo, you listen to somebody's album, you, ooh, that shit was fire. You eating something good that's like, ooh, this shit, this these is fucking, fire. <laughs> fire, everybody knows what fire is. So you got that fire, you rocking about that 75 to 90 percentile. Your shit is fire, you doing better than most people, mm. better than most artists. That's like, that's a good, you want to shoot for that fire range. That's what you should be aiming as an artist, I feel. Like for you the should most be wanting part. your art to be high quality, top notch. And you know, it's a lot of metrics that go into how we're going to be determining yeah. these grades, but we got to get your grade just to let you know, you know, where you stand as far as your project. So that's the fun part about the shit. And then we got one more above that. You hit the shit out the park. There's more? The number one, the numero uno. I don't uh. feel like we're going to be giving out too many of these. This is going to be hard to come by. This is going to be hard to come by. Absolutely. You get that moon rock. Ooh. All of my smokers, you probably, if you haven't smoked it, you either know somebody that did or you at least know the myth of it. And you know the legend and the story behind this shit, and it's probably one of the most powerful strands of weed like we have. It's so mythical. At that least that I've heard of. When when Tone brought it to my attention, like he was putting me on game. That's how mythical it is. Mm-hmm. This is only like word of mouth type shit. Yeah. I haven't even seen it before. See, I ain't smoked it before. It's I've elusive. heard it and I know it's out there. But by before this podcast is done, I will be able to report on Moon Rock. Back to you guys. But if you get that Moon Rock grade, then your shit, I mean, that's like a classic. It's and we trying to classic. change that narrative because everybody quick to throw classic on everything. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Moon Rock is our version of classic. And I could tell you motherfuckers now, everybody ain't getting a Moon everybody Rock. So if you get a Moon Rock from us, then you know, know your shit is crazy. But yeah, man, that's the list for us. So we got Dirt, we got Reggie, mm-hmm. we got that mid, 
You got that loud fire. Fire. And then you got that moon rock, man. So let's see what these are going to get. You ready to get into this shit? I'm ready. I think we done laid the ground rules. Y'all should have somewhat of an idea where we going with this shit by now. I think so. If you haven't, then... You ain't paying Rewind attention. the shit. Rewind the shit. Rewind, Rewind that back thought. and listen to that shit again and then pick back up and then we're going to start from here. But yes, we're going to keep it moving and we're going to get into these motherfucking album reviews. So, who do we have first on the docket? Who we got? First on the docket that we have. Oh, my God. She might not need no introduction, mm. but she's going to get one anyway. Of this course. is Young Ma. <laughs> Young Ma. Young Ma. Young, Young and May. Hey. Young and May. Okay. All right. She has this album that she kind of just dropped, you know what I'm saying, out the blue, really. Um, not really out the blue. It was just, it's been a long time coming. Cause but who been, is Young and May, though? Young like, and May. Who, like, for those who don't, who might not have heard of her, like, you know what I mean? Where did, where did she come from? What's she... What's up with her? All right, I'm going to fill you in if you don't know who Young and May is uh, a little bit. This is a Brownsville, Brooklyn, born and raised artist. She is of lesbian persuasion, of course. (laughs) And she shot to fame with that viral single, Ooh, which came out in 2016. I don't know if I've ever heard the phrase lesbian persuasion before. That might be a first. We're going to coin that. They got a little ring to it, too. It came off like real smooth. We're going to be coining phrases all throughout this. Hey, we we trailblazing here. What else can you do but coin shit? You know what I'm saying? We a first of its kind. Ain't ain't no shit out here like that. You feel me? Can't find it. So that's where she at. You know what I'm saying? Okay, young ma. She followed up with the EP. This is a triple platinum EP top 20 single and she followed that up with an EP actually called Her Story the following year mm. so since then she's been dropping a string of singles and kind of like getting her getting herself ready and that brings us to this wonderful project Her Story in the Making or Her Story in the Making however mm. you want to pronounce that but you know has a definitely has a ring to it fun fact Young and May has directed a lesbian porn movie called The Gift and what? produced by Pornhub. So she is a legit <laughs> director. She has Yo, that credit. Oh, she's her officially belt now. in the porn industry. She really now. is. That's yeah. crazy. That okay. is. That's I, did, what it I did not know that. Of course, sex sells. Hey. That's how it works in the hey. industry. And I mean, I'm, it's 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 in brand, so it's still it's on totally in brand. brand. So good. It's totally about. She's about that life. Okay. So you know, of course, after that. Fun fact as well, she was once offered the role for the rapper on um, on Empire, the show by Lee Daniels, the hip hop soap opera. Interesting. Bopper, you know what okay, that's what it is. The there was a lot of people in the running for that. There was at a lot the time. of people, but I she was definitely she one. Okay, she would have been called Betty Bars, and she makes a couple oh, references to that. She makes uh, what was the girl's name? The, uh, Frida Gatz. Frida Gatz. She's supposed to be Frida Gatz. She Gats? was supposed to be Frida, oh. Frida Gatz, but I guess they were giving her the name Betty Bars. But That's, you know, okay. Of course, Young and May had to turn that down. That would have been interesting. I fuck with Frida Gatz. That would have been interesting. I fuck with Frida Gatz too, but I totally see you know her viewpoint as yeah. far as like crafting your own identity, yeah. having to build that on your yeah, own. Yeah, that makes and sense. Versus being known as a fictional character that sometimes take over. Absolutely, your whole it's hard brand. to break away from and that, it's especially hard when you're dealing with national television. Yeah, like. You know, once people know you as that in in waking memory, living memory, that's all you are. That's why those intros are so important. It's so so important. So she had to turn that down. Okay. And now we know Young and May as Young and May. Yeah. And she's giving us this fire okay. album. But so, then given Ooh, like the success of Ooh, she kind of took a step back because this is a big gap between like her last project Ooh, the success of Ooh, yeah. and then this project here. Like she took like a good three four year hiatus, kind of just. Yeah, yeah, she chilling. When I really just chilling, she's been putting out sparing singles. She, she of course had. Well, I mean, the she kind of talked about it. Like she spoke about it. In yeah, she kind of like the success was so big. She she was getting pressure from the label to like, all right, you got to drop now. You got to yeah, put the album yeah, out yeah. now. Ride this wave. She kind of was the opposite and was like, you know, I'm gonna take my time with this. I'm gonna settle it out. I want to make because I'm here about the longevity Facts. as opposed to just riding the wave, burning out. Yeah, yeah. And then kind of you know going back in. So that was interesting to kind of like on. letting letting the the, the vibe of the song and letting the success of the song linger on a little bit yeah. and letting people fully embrace it and take it and determining it. your own shit as opposed to letting yeah. the wave you know letting the wave dictate you and exactly. carry you out to sea and you get lost and shit like that you've yep. seen that you've seen stories like that yep. but 
you know, not to dwell too much on that, let's talk about this music situation. Okay. She put out this album on September 27th in 2019. We have 21 tracks on the album. So it's a bit of a, it's a ride. long, long It's album. a bit of a ride. Definitely a ride. An you know hour and eight minutes. That's a full length. She's That's a healthy us project. A lot. I mean, and it's only right because it's been a minute. It's and been this a is minute. like technically her debut this studio is her album. Debut studio album. So, of course. You know, the fans definitely waited long enough for it. She gave them a full plate. They sure <laughs> have. And we ate that full plate. Definitely did. I'm gonna tell you that for sure. Um, should I just give them the rating? Yeah, what did you think about it? What what was your... All right, so we got to get the drum roll. Brrr, this is the first, first herbal tea rating. Brrr, da, da, what did da, you da. think? Young Ma. Young, Young Ma. Nat, her story. All right. Her story in the making gets a 52% from me. Oh, this is a mid. This is a mid. There were a lot of bangers on okay. this album. Let okay. me tell you. There's there's a ton of them. Um, I mean, let's... Let's let's just go through it. No mercy. The intro. She comes in with that. That's that's something to come up. The single big. Those are all highlights for me. And as well as like other songs like Cold World, Lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Okay, but the one that I stuck with the most, the highlight for me was Car Confessions. Because okay. I love a good song. Mm. I love an artist that zones out. Yeah. And it kind of really gave me intro feel. Like, that could have been an intro. Like, the way artists used to do intros back in the day. Yeah, yeah. They used to just kind of, like, do a whole verse and whatever whatever their mind state was in the moment yeah, of creating just that album. Shit. Just talking their yeah. shit. And that's what she gave on Car Confessions. Okay. So that is why it's... Um, is number one for me. It came in a close second, like sober thoughts. Like I was like going back and forth between that um, that album. But uh, I really, really. What did with. you play? So car confessions, or what? That was your playlister. Definitely car confessions. Mm -hmm. Definitely no love. Definitely sober thoughts. Okay. Those were like my biggest playlists mm. as well. Okay. And of course, like the rest of the album is pretty pretty solid. The one I was not really feeling so much. Uh oh, give it to him. Never need a nigga for nothing. Cause and my, then my, AN. Cause my, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was not really doing it for yeah. me. I felt like it was beneath her. Like, it sounds like a cheap DJ Mustard beat with a cheap Ty Dolla Sign yes. kind of hook situation. That was definitely her mustard grab. She yeah. was, I feel like if you're going to do that, why not just work with the people? Why not? Holla it was definitely mustard. a I'm mustard sure. like replica. Yeah. You didn't have to. It might have been made around that era because that was around the time when she kind of was popping, like with the. Ooh. It could have been. So a, she, it could have been. She might have had that in the, in the tuck. tuck. Yeah, but um, I mean, it it kind of sounds cheap to me. I feel like she could have at least either hollered at them or you know could have just left that one off. Yeah, for me. But I, I mean, know, I wasn't. I was probably mad. wanted a radio song, but I didn't. <laughs> she definitely was reach. That was a reacher. That was definitely reaching. Yeah. But okay. you know that was that was the kind of the clunker for me. Okay, what about you? Okay, though? I mean, twenty one songs. You definitely gonna get some of those because that's a long album. I'm not expecting like too much craziness mm. from from a long album. But the one big credit I gotta give to Young and May on this album, she she kind of stayed in her lane for the most part. Like other than that one right there, where she kind of reaching, but she was still in her bag. She was still talking about shit and she rapping on this album, which yeah. I really appreciate. Like she's really rapping. The intro, like you mentioned, comes on and that's definitely another grab at like the Meek Mill Esque type intro, sure. like it had that same setup as far as the beat and the production. Yeah. But I thought it was dope. That shit came in hard, and it I'm did. like, ooh, like she kind of setting the tone. I'm yeah, like, okay, did. I'm ready to hear what she got to say. You know what you're getting. Yeah, and then so my favorite, favorite, favorite joint on the whole project was lifestyle. The lifestyle. That shit that just hard. so hard to me, and it's giving me Godfather Part Three. Mob Deep, that Go Three Father Part Three. You know how it come on like that? Eh, eh. And yeah, yeah, that's yeah, how this yeah, shit yeah, came yeah, on. So yeah, it was like, I man, you. I was yeah, like, yeah. ooh. And then when them Kinda drums grimy. come in, like, and then she just left it open. She ain't, the beat ain't too crazy. Got that murky ass bass. And she just spent her shit. Fuck being humble. Getting pussy by the bundle. Then <laughs> yo, she she was bodying it. That's my favorite Boy. joint. I I I playlisted that off rip. Um the next joint she had on there was um 
that I fuck with was numb. Numb was kind of dope. I fuck with that shit. That's kind of her getting her emo yeah. bag. I swear to go numb. No. Yeah. I swear to go numb. No. But then it's like, it's kind of scary because you look at like some of these artists that's, you know, passing away from yeah. drug use and overdosing and shit For like sure. that. But like, it's a lot of pressures that come with this music shit. And then you talking about love on top of that, which is another fucking yeah. drug within itself. Absolutely. And she just want to numb it out, escape it. Like she don't want to feel them emotions and shit. Like, I can I, relate to that. That's what I'm saying. Movie. Like, that's why I was like, when I heard that yeah. shit, like, but she giving you a lot of shit like this on this mm -hmm. album, which I appreciate. She giving you content and it's genuine to her. Like, it's coming yeah. from her standpoint. So I fuck with that. And then like following that is Bipolar, which is like right after that. And it's yeah. kind of in the same bag of numb, but it got a different feel. And I don't know, that shit was just kind of dope. And it sound like, it sounded like she writing like a letter to her ex or something. Somebody like somebody she did wrong and she kind of just like, that's the one she like, fuck love, fuck love. I don't want to love. But um, that's definitely her getting her emo bag. And that was another one I put on there and I was like, I fuck with. And then the whole project, she only had like two features, two or three features. And yeah. it looked like they was like in-house features, like yeah. the homies, yeah. which I also appreciate about the project. Um, I thought that was dope. Overall, man, I gave it a loud. You gave it a loud. I gave her that loud, All right. and I gave it like a seventy percent loud. Okay. So, okay. I thought it was. I thought it was a great first studio effort. Like I thought she really put. She put a lot of quality music on there. She did. Like you said, it's a lot of bangers on there. Now a some lot. of them might fall into like kind of sounding the same. Like when I listen to it straight through, it don't hit as hard for me as when I listen to it like scatter like, all yeah. over. Like when I just hit the songs right like down. out of pocket by itself, they kind of sound better to me. Mm outside of the playlist of the album. But she got some dope shit on there and then she talking, like she spitting that shit. Yeah. Like she not just rapping. She got her shit where she talking about, you know, I fuck bitches, you know, throw the strap on, fuck a bitch, da 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 da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Money, street shit. But she not overdoing it with that street shit, with the, she really getting in her feelings, her emotions, shit you she been going through all this time. So you get a lot of facets. Hey, hey, man, she gave you a lot of food to work with. It's an album you, you could definitely sit with for a while. You know what I mean? Let's talk about the, like, let's talk about some quotables from this album for a second. Okay. You mentioned lifestyle and there were definitely some quotables in there. Mm -hmm. Game will teach you a lot, but you gotta pay to, play to learn. Mm. I mean, definitely that's... quotable from that. Yeah. Food stamps at Key Food. Who don't know about this life? That's what I'm saying. Like, like she's spitting like... And then imagery, God. shit you could picture. Like, she putting you, like, in her. She's giving you... Details like that is what makes the album rich. That's what I'm saying. It That's a great adjective for it, rich. It's a rich mm -hmm. album. Very and I rich. fuck with it. And she stayed in her lane. And like, she when stayed. she did reach, she stayed playing it, and she just rushed, reached her arm, as yeah, opposed yeah, yeah. to putting the whole feet and trying to reach overreach. She kind of just... She stayed in her lane at this point. She for giving sure. you quality... That quality young and may sound. Like you definitely got her fans, her core fan base would definitely be pleased with this project. I you think. definitely would get to know her a lot better just by going through that album. Yeah. yeah. So that's what it is. Okay, that's so we got allowed from me, 70%. And what did you give it? I gave it a mid. A mid, okay. A mid. mid, like what? 50, you said 52. 52. That's very specific. 52%. 52 percent. It's a okay. Mid for me. Okay, so Young and May, her story, you get a loud, and you got that mid. That's not that bad. Mid. That's a pretty decent grade, you know, because you average that out. That's about what, like a 60? About a 60, about 62%, a 60 so she's 65, yeah. You know, if you average If it. you combine in our, both of our joints. So. For sure, for sure. Shout out to Young and May. Go check that out. Streaming everywhere on all platforms. Like we said, that came out in September. So, you know, it's been out for a, a few months now, but definitely go check it out. It's worth a listen. Um, so who do yes. we got next on the motherfucking Who do we got game? next? Oh, man. Haley Kiyoko. Haley Kiyoko. Let me see if I can find her. Right Haley now. Kiyoko. This is that I'm too sensitive about this shit. Yeah. She oh, I'm too sensitive for this she, shit. She, Fucking she it up. definitely too sensitive for this shit. Yeah. So Haley Kiyoko, um, if some of you might not know, okay. she's, a, she's a singer. Um, she's kind of like a... I wouldn't. I would say pop, but not so much. She's like cross between like a pop and an indie mm -hmm. singer songwriter type artist. Right, um, right. She's a child model slash actress. She was actually in the movie Scooby Doo back in um, 2009. They remade. They did like a live action version of Scooby Doo. She was in that, um, and she was also in a singing group um, called the Stunners. And they went on tour with Justin Bieber back in the day. This was like around 2009, I right, think. Right. Right. Um, so her debut project was Expectations that came out in March of 2018. Right. So she's a fairly new artist. Like, she's been doing her acting and modeling thing for a while, but she's now stepping into this music scene. 
Um, and she's a Q plus artist. Um, she's born in LA. Her background is Japanese and German. So I think her mom's was Japanese. Her pops is German. Gotcha, um, gotcha. So, you know, she got a little bit of a, a, a bling going on there. Mm. Um, and she also, one of the things I read about her, she gets acupuncture regularly to kind of deal with the, you know, the grueling schedule of, of uh, tour life. And I actually, I've had acupuncture before. So My shit I, is actually documented, like, on the show, you know The what? Circle. I got acupuncture <laughs> on the show. We did see this. That shit. This is documented. This yeah, is actually yeah. true to Acupuncture is different. It's not for everybody. It's not. I like, I've done it, it a few times, and I don't know. I don't see myself getting it regularly. I didn't really reap the crazy benefits that everybody else say they get when, okay. they, when they get it done. That shit definitely is uncomfortable and you feel those needles like I mean but it ain't like painful painful it's just like ah and there's some parts where they hit you it's just like woo but I mean Haley seems to enjoy it so you know yeah, that's yeah, part of yeah. what she does is her regimen but um but yeah that's 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 Haley Kyogo did you were you did you find out any, like did you know about her at all before I knew a little bit about her I knew a little bit about her but of course I definitely got into her a little bit more once we got into some of her music Let's. I got a couple fun facts for you. Okay. About Haley Kiyoko. Let's give her some little tea. She was featured in Taylor Swift's video for "You Need to Calm Down." You need to calm down. Where she had a, a lot of LGBT mm, representation yeah, okay. in that video. So she was one of the slew of celebrities. It was a lot. Was it was a lot video. of cameos. So, so shout out to her and shout out to Taylor Swift, who's an ally. We consider her an ally. Absolutely. Um, and she also was once accepted into NYU's Clive Davis School for Recorded Music. Mm. But of course, her career was starting to take off. She was doing a lot of movies, mm, so yeah. you know, she chose. So she like a, a she done she's so dabbling, like, dibbling, dabbling. Yeah, I mean, like it makes sense because if you you, you go going with to a, school with, for music and then you get an opportunity, you, you gotta, gotta go take with that it, opportunity. Yeah. Just get that Absolutely. bag. So. So okay. What we got about this music? Sense. So her project she got out, she actually just released a little four pack, little four pack EP right. um called I'm Too Sensitive for This. Um but we're gonna look at the single, L O V E Me, that she dropped. Um right, the single right. came out uh on the well the EP came out on the thirteenth, but she dropped the single like a little bit before. So like a few weeks before that, she dropped the uh the single. It's about two, two and a half minutes. Okay. Um, and this is the second release. This EP is the second release since her debut, I believe. Okay. Um, I listened to it. Um, it's cool. It's cool. It ain't crazy. I ain't hate it. I ain't love it. But it's cool. It's like right in the middle. It's that mid for me. I gave it like a 60% mid. You gave it a mid. Yeah, I gave okay. it that 60% mid. I thought the song, it kind of gave me that Mandy Moore. Remember Mandy Moore had that song Candy? Yeah. I'm missing, missing you, you like candy. candy. That beat, as soon as I heard that beat, I'm like, it took me right there. I'm yeah. like, this is, this is the fucking update, the 2019 version of this song. I felt kind of similarly about yeah, that. Yeah, well. but then she, she is spitting. Like she said something, I forgot the line. She said, um, she said, I'll throw away my revenue if you swear you'll never leave. Like, that's a that's a strong line right there. That's pretty much, you like, I get it, all this shit up. Mm. If you like, if you want it and you don't like this lifestyle I'm living, or if this is too much for you, I give all this shit up. Just, okay. just promise you ain't going nowhere. So that's kind of what kind of bad she was in lyrically, but then it give you that almost a little cheesy bop from the production. Like, that's where I get the Mandy Moore shit from the production. Mm -hmm. But she is going in lyrically on this shit. Okay. So it was a decent song. I fuck with it. I bop with it. I gave it a Reggie. Reggie! I gave it a Reggie. I gave it a Reggie. <laughs> and I'm going to explain why. Oh, shit. I totally feel you on that um, up-tempo pop tip. Mm -hmm. That bass line on it. The really, really thick synthesizer mm -hmm. bass line. It drives the song. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It's a little one, two step bop. Um, it does give me like Taylor Swift meets Gwen Stefani type ish. Yes. Especially the vocals. The vo the way yeah. the vocals are set up. Yeah. I didn't really give the song right in too many points though. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But, you know, She's okay. spitting her story, you know, she's doing her thing, you know, she's she's coming from a like a bit of a maybe like a younger, more your know, vibrant perspective. Definitely. So Absolutely. you know, I'm gonna give it that as well. But um altogether, that's my rate, and I gave that it a Reggie. Reggie. What like where the Reggie. percentage at with the Reggie? Um, just straight Reggie, just, just just straight Reggie. I just 
gave it a straight. I uh, probably like an upper range, like thirty percent. It's not really a big of a range in the Reggie. Yeah, like, it's if not really shit a Reggie, you Reggie. It's just it's Reggie. Just like, it really okay, is it, you know. Hey, well, not, it is what it is. Shout out to Haley Kiyoko. Shout out to Kaylee Kiyo- Kiyoko. It's Kiyoko. No. I keep saying Kiyoki. It's yeah. Kiyoko. Haley, Haley Kiyoko. Kiyoko. We're gonna fuck up names. We're gonna fuck up album titles. Yeah, we, we still learning all this shit. But shout out to you. Um, L O V E me, mm-hmm. the single on the EP. I'm too sensitive for this. Go um, listen for yourself. It's out now, man. Stream let it. Us, we let got, us know what you I think. I gave of it a mid. PZ gave it that Reggie. Mm-hmm. Reggie. We yeah. very interested to know what y'all think. Cause you know, we 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 hip hop artists. You know what I'm saying? We right. do that hip hop shit. But By like we said, show. we not constricting ourselves to any one given genre. We're gonna be reviewing all this shit. And this is not necessarily like I can't make this type of music. So me judging it, it's a different perspective. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like this is kind of out of my lane, but we gonna be judging the shit because we're casual listeners of all types. We're of consumers music. of so all this music. So. We listen to the shit you put it out. We gonna judge it, but we got a mid in the Reggie. Mm-hmm. So what do y'all think? Hit us up in the comments. Let us know at herbal t dot pod. Just your thoughts, of course. Support all these Q plus artists that we're um, we're showcasing out here. Because Absolutely, they're all out here representing themselves, and at the end of the day, that's always a win. Absolutely. So who do we got next on the list? Oh, my God. Oh, We've man. been waiting for this song. <laughs> We've been waiting for this. All right. Ay, ay, ay. Here it come. The next one we got. Saucy Santana. Hey. Step up to the plate. <laughs> Saucy Santana. Saucy Santana. Well, that's that's an interesting name within itself. Saucy Santana. Yeah. It's like, all right, who is that? Who, who is that? You, know, you don't Saucy know Santana? nothing. It sounds spicy. It Whoever sounds it is, spicy. It's something going on. When you mentioned this artist to me, I was like, all right. <laughs> Okay, okay. And somebody just put me on, like, you know what I'm saying? Bugs just put me on, because I wasn't fam- that familiar with Saucy. Yeah. You know so. what I'm saying? And Bugs hit me, I was like, yeah, you know Saucy Santana. I was like, I was like what? And then they checked it out, and I was like, oh, man, this is crazy. Saucy Santana is a Florida-based, Tallahassee, Florida-based mm. artist who found success with her viral single, Walk em Like a Dog, mm. which, you know... You look at the video, you could definitely see, because it's very well produced. Like, she came through. She was not holding back on that. She gave you the business on Walk em Like a Dog. In August 2019, the video earning more than 3 million views. Mm. Unfortunately, though, with success, as they say, comes the hate or comes the, the bullshit. Yep. So we want to send our prayers out to Saucy Santana. Yeah, that's it crazy. Was, she was reportedly shot. Uh, a couple of times in the vehicle with a couple of her friends. So we want to wish Saucy Santana the best in in their recovery. But, you know, bringing it back to the note of her music, of his music, I was gonna say, they are I male. Guess. They are male. So, you know, we just want to be clear about that. Um, Material Girl. Material Girl! <laughs> Material Girl is uh, the single. But well, something else about uh, uh, Saucy. So Saucy is heavily influenced by Gucci Mane. That's one of his oh, favorite artists. That so, makes sense. You know, asked in one of his interviews, you know, who's somebody you want to collaborate? Gucci Mane was like, hands down, That's one of the true. first ones. And, you know, he also embraces that Miami sound. So he's from Tallahassee. Yeah, yeah. Based in Miami, but had been in Miami for a while, but right, really right. embraces that that new bop. And that's kind of a, a new... I mean, you had Trin, you had your Trinas, you had your Lukes and all of that, yeah, but like, yeah, there's yeah. like a new wave of sound coming out of the Miami it's area. It's definitely like a bounce influence yeah, type they got of their music. Own little bounce. But it has a, a little bit of a... I don't know how you describe it. Um, it's influenced by like maybe college... Like, you know... There's a lot of uh, colleges. A lot in, of big colleges. Big colleges in Florida. Yeah, and absolutely. So they have their bands that, you know, really, really shine. Yeah. It's really like a, that's really like a culture. And, and it's hot down there. Anywhere you go that's so just they, always hot, you're going to have like a different spice to your shit. So you're going to dance. You're gonna, it's going to always be danceable. It's going to always be boppable like that. Yeah. But Material Girl was the song actually featured at the end of the Walk em Like a Dog video. So she kind of gave you a little like the split. I teaser. love when they do that. That's gave like a little, little old school yeah. shit. When they used to give you like, like 10, 15 seconds 15 of the next single. Come. Of the oh, song. man. So I love when that. people do that. So this was actually coming. That's hard. So there it is. And, um, you know, back to her single, Walk em Like a Dog. That's actually just Florida slang. It's basically slang for going in on somebody or something, yeah. kind of dragging them. Yeah. It could be a good thing yeah. or it could be a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Like I could say... Um, I was definitely walking them chips 
the you Bahani walked them barbecue shits like chips. A dog. I was yeah. walking them shits. You walked them yesterday shits out of them chips. when we was meeting up. <laughs> you walked for... the shits out of them chips for real. <laughs> I walked them straight walked out them of your all the way, all the way yes. out the crib. So it could be like that, or okay. like when Cardi B was saying, "Yeah, you know, I dog, dog walk, dog walk I dog walk." Same kind of, you know what I'm saying? Same kind of deal. Okay, we got it. So there it is. So material girl. Okay, material girl. My rating for that. What you give it? That's loud. Oh. <laughs> That's loud. That is all the way loud. Okay. Like, you're going to get, you're going to get Florida production. You're mm-hmm. going to get the bop. You're going to get the dance. That's what it is. It's going to yeah. be simple beats, danceable, twerkable. Yes. And I'm always here for a good Ratchet song. Love it. I'm always here ratchet for it. Ratchet is, is not lacking ratchet. It's not lacking. That's the one thing. It's not lacking. In ratchetness <laughs> at all. Like, and you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of different colors to rap music. It doesn't always have to be one. It doesn't. So, and it's, know, ne- it's never been that way. It's never ever. been that way. It's never been that way. And then there's phases in just the different types. So Everybody had a time. There's good Every ratchet different songs. Different ones was popular at yeah. certain times. Yeah. There's good ratchet songs. There's bad ratchet songs. Exactly. This is definitely one of the good ones. There you go. And I definitely recommend it. Um, one of the highlights is uh, a couple of the lines. Let's see. Uh-oh. Let me give you a quotable here. Um, one of the quotables is, I like my niggas laid, don't come here with no chips. <laughs> I remember that. I knew you was going to like that line too. When I heard it, I was like, he going to like this line. This is, this is definitely a quotable from the song. I'm not going to say it's the best one, but it's definitely something that stuck in my memory. And, you know, listen... If you here for a bop, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely a strip club summer bop. Yeah. Like it got that bounce, that mm, 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 mm. hey, mm, and then it's mm, it's just a fun mm, song. Like I love a good fun. quality fun song. That's just that. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. He knew it was just gonna be a fun bouncy song. He yeah. having fun with it. He talking his shit. And like, that's the type of artist. It's he just is, a dope at least song right now. I mean, personally, me, I gave it aloud too. So this is the first time we agreeing. <laughs> we agreeing. At least we agreed on the first episode. Yeah, That's dope. Yeah. We agreeing on this one. I gave it aloud too. I yeah. thought this shit was it was loud. This was joint was dope. I gave it like loud. a 65, 68 on a loud scale. Yeah, I'm about the same. This yeah. song is a song that will put you in a good mood. As soon as you was, hear it, it give you that. You that's a it. that's a powerful song right yeah. there. Like for a song to be able to do that as soon as you hear it, it kind of like you just drop whatever bullshit you was kind of, and you just want to bounce real quick. It got that kind of feel, which Show is the dope. Show the album cover, the, uh, the album oh, cover shit. for um, for for Material Girl. Yeah, this song know. is definitely, definitely it. Like it's it's at any time of the year. It's mostly a summer bop, but you can bump this up any time of the year. It's Currently working on a Grammy. Meanwhile, I'm bouncing in with your man in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you know what I'm saying? For those of us that like ASMR, she was on Rap Genius talking about the lyrics to to her record. And you just see her. And when you hear the nails clicking, mm. like you know, you yeah. know what type of you know what type of shit that is. Yeah. You know she coming from a certain school. Yeah. You know she coming from a certain hood. Yeah. And it's like she's all the way, he's all the way authentic. I just, Fuck, I'm fucking up the pro saying now. You sheen the shit out of it. No, I know. He is <laughs> giving all man. types he's bearded of bearded and all that. Man. That's a I do not man. want him coming for me, <laughs> but we're going to respect him as who I he mean, is. but Material Girl, I think he's calling himself a girl. Yeah. He's a Material Girl. Yeah, yeah. Girl, material Girl. girl you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's what it is. That's, that's his life. That's his... That's who he is. Exactly. So shout out to Saucy Santana, man. Shout out. Material Girl. Prayers up. I mean, he's good walking around, so yeah, he's yeah, definitely yeah. good. That's some, you know, that's some crazy shit to survive and encounter. Like, thank God it didn't go left. Yeah, of course. Not sure what happened and what went down with that, and that's none of our business. But we just happy he all right and can continue to make some continue dope music to give and bring us, us some bops. more fun joints, man. Because for sure, we definitely both gave it a loud first time we agreeing on the show so far. So you know, that's pretty dope. That says a lot. Um, but yeah, a loud from both me and PZ. Shout out to Saucy Santana. So. What's that next box? Who do we got next? Who we got? Oh, shit. We got the homie. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. We got the homie Medino Green. Yeah. Shout out to Medino Green um, from Queens. Queens artist um, by way of South Carolina. You know, he got a southern southern root, southern family. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, born and raised, in, not, yeah, I think born in South Carolina, but raised in Queens. In Queens. Um, Jamaica, to be exact. Um he started rapping around like 2003, um, you know, doing this music shit, rap artist about these bars, 
You know what I'm saying? Um, dropped his first mixtape in like 2011. Um, and that's right, right. Medino Green, man. He uh, he came out, I read in the article, he came out to his mom and dad like around the same time. But like his situation was kind of similar to mine's. Like he came out to his mom's and his mom's was like, you know, whatever, nothing gonna change, it's all love. Right. But then he came out to his pops and it was kind of different. And he kind of was, he, he did the one foot in, one foot out come out. He was like, he told his pops he was bi. Right. Which it was like, you know, you try to yeah. soften the blow a little yeah. bit. Like, people don't know, like, the psychology behind coming out and all that shit. It's a lot that people go through in the shit you deal with based on the social conscious and all that shit. But absolutely. that's something separate. We're going to talk about separate, that a later As far as the music, we but yeah, like, that was to similar that. to some shit, like, I kind of went through, with, you know, with my family. For sure. Um, but he also considers himself a butch queen, which I thought was interesting. Um, that's that For those, evolution. you know, in the community, y'all know what that is. Um, but he doesn't feel the need to kind of just, you know, be hyper-masculine and mm -hmm. show, like, overt uh, aggression and all that shit just to, you know, have that representation of somebody who's masculine. He's comfortable in his own skin, for the lack of better term. Right, right, right. Um, but, yeah, we got the the single, MMAI. MMAI. Me, Myself, and I. Me, Myself, um, That came out in November on the 10th. 10th of November. It's a single. It's more like a freestyle type joint. We couldn't find it streaming anywhere, so I think it's just like a freestyle. You can find it on his SoundCloud. Right. Um, and it's a short... But sweet joint. It's like right to the point. Two two minutes, 17 seconds. It's his latest uh, offering. <sighs> I gave it that loud, man. You gave it the loud? I gave it the loud. I fuck with this joint. First of all, I'm a sucker for a good flip. You flip a nice little joint that was a hit. He flipping that Beyonce, me, myself, and I joint. Like, that joint is already fire. So if you flipping it right, you throw the right drums on it. And he's he spin he spin that shit. I fucked with it. I thought it was dope. I love the beat. And then, you know, it, he he got the allow. He said, "Been bad switching switching looking switching looks for the season. Put a few pounds on just to know these niggas I was eating." He like got them little like he gave me them little fab jab bars like here and there like I like them little punchlines and shit. He just talking his shit. It's like a quick freestyle joint over an ill little flip sample beat. Like this is some shit I just eat real quick. You know right. what I'm saying? Just something light. So for what it was, I thought it was dope. I gave it that loud. You know what I'm saying? It's like a freestyle joint, kind of like a in between snack between projects or some shit like that. Like that's how I looked at it for sure. Let me give you some fun facts about Medino Green for a second. Yeah. This is definitely this is one of our artists on our top fifty, number forty six. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So we definitely rep the boy. You know what I'm saying? Of course, like um, Erton said, Queens Bridge Bread, Boston based right now. Mm. Um, he put out his mixtape, Carry, and the Carry. The Carry just came out in the summer. And he was once part of the Out Mob. Now I remember Out Mob. That's Swanee. That's another Swanee super group situation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was him, Bryant. And Bone and Tell. Shout out to all of them. Oh, the homies. Yeah, those like some of the hardest lyricists that I've ever come across, like personally. So Kids had know, another super group. Swanee. Pre pre alliance. Pre alliance. So Swanee was definitely repping. Swanee always reps the bars and the beats. That's always, always been about. But um for this song, I gave it a mid. Okay. I gave it a mid. Okay. I thought it was a good flip too. Okay. And um I like the fact that, you know, he when you when again when artists are like self confessional and giving a little bit of their soul and you can't their, go their wrong struggle with that. You, you can't, can't lose with that, with that. yeah because because only you gonna be able to give that perspective to give that. and you know it's what I'm not saying? something that's given a lot it's not in our community for sure mm -mm. you know I like that it opens the conversation as far as like the masculinity the toxicity that comes with the dating scene yeah so that's what I got for and I like that shit yeah yeah sometimes you gotta you you gonna you gonna go through it, you know. It's just part of the the whole culture, part of the lifestyle. It'll put you it'll put you in a certain place, and I like that he was just open and honest about. Yeah, that. it was dope, man. So yeah, other than that, okay, that song is definitely legit. It's a mid from me. Okay, okay, so a mid and a loud. That's not bad. Like we kind of we ain't been too far We're off. Not too I far think the off. Reggie and the we gave who we gave a Reggie and a, a mid or Reggie and a loud. I think we gave a Reggie to to Haley Keogh. You gave a Reggie to I Haley. He gave it that Reggie. Yeah. All right, so a mid and a loud for Medino Green. Shout for out sure. to the homie Medino Green. Shout man. out to the homie Medino. MMAI go stream that on SoundCloud. It's available. Me, myself, and I. It is available. Medino Green. All right. 
So that kind of wraps it up for our Q plus artists for this segment. Yeah. Now we got one more artist, and then we're gonna take it to our allies. So who's our ally for today? Who is our the ally? first ally? First ally on the Herbal Tea podcast. Y'all go love this. This is a big fucking Get deal. Ready. None other than Kanye motherfucking West. Woo! Oh shit! <laughs> now some people might be like, all right, Kanye West, like. Is he an ally? Like, I don't know. Like, does he? But for those who do remember, back in, like, 2005, he yeah. had that infamous MTV interview with, yeah. I think it was Sway, where he pretty much came out and was like, yo, it's a lot of homophobia in hip-hop. We use the word fag. We throw it around, myself included. We need to stop. It's not right. It's discrimination. Mm -hmm. Like, that was huge to even just say that so publicly say at that, that. time. Yeah. Where he was at, he was, like, on the top. Like, this was on fire Kanye West. Like... Kanye just broke into the scene, the polo don, the book bags, and all of that shit. So for him to be able to come out at that moment, and it was no reason for him to do that. Like, he Dude, wasn't being pressured. To, it was yeah. kind of just he felt that at the moment. And that was big for him to do. And that's something I'll never forget. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of people are angry, yeah. upset with Kanye right now for certain things he do. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. We all got good and bad shit with us. Yeah, Nobody's yeah. perfect. Nobody's all good. Nobody's all bad. It is what it is. You got to be careful when you're judging people. And the shit he's doing... As of recent, a lot of the shit I don't agree with. But that's one thing you can never take away from Kanye West um, regardless. So that's the reason why he qualifies as an ally. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, most of y'all know him for the Jesus Walks. He's married to Kim Kardashian right. with the fat ass and all of that. You right, know, they right, got two right. beautiful kids. Um, they all, have of that, all of that shit. They four got, kids. They got four kids? They got four kids, my oh, nigga. Shit. See, that's how much I don't four be in kids. people personally. I, I don't be in all of that shit. You but know? I do. I, I know Northwest. Northwest. After that, I like... Um, he got his son. He got Chicago. See, song, I didn't even know that he got a lot. And you know I, the whole, you know yeah. the whole family. <laughs> the whole family. But he got a big family with Kim Kardashian. He got a big so family. Everybody know who Kanye West is. Um, he and was Saint, also Saint, Saint. Forgot about Saint oh, too. There you go, Saint. Yeah, Saint. Saint. That was he was one. also in a severe uh, car accident, like yeah. early on in his career, yeah, and yeah. that actually spawned the song "Through the Wire," which he sampled um, Shaka Khan on. But he recorded the shit with his jaw wired, so like that just gives you kind of some of the 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 spirit of Kanye West, like yep. the type of person he is. Like he is strong dude. Like to go through some shit yes. like that and to record a hit, something that eventually becomes a hit. Off of you know a, a traumatic experience like yeah, that, yeah, everybody can't do some real. shit like He's that. Always And then the college dropout is like one of my favorite projects of all time. Like when that shit came out, like that just brings me back to a certain time. He featured so many of my favorite artists at the time, mm -hmm. like Common, Most Def, like everybody was on that project. Like yeah. it was just the production. Like he was just in his bag on that project, and it's like weird. you didn't hear anybody talking about college like that. Like because I was kind of going through like the whole. Is college the right thing for me? Like, should I finish? Like, I'm graduate with all these loans and shit. Like, he was really speaking on that shit. He right. was the first artist I ever heard touching on some shit like that. Yeah. So that was just a big deal for me as far as Kanye West. Like, so what are what are some of your your thoughts on Kanye West? What are some of your memories? What do you Kanye West is definitely influential to me as far as like production is concerned. And mm -hmm. I always respected like how big his productions would sound because he he brings in a whole lot of different collaborators, and yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like collaboration by committee, yeah. is what they say. Mm -hmm. I like that situation. My favorite Kanye album is uh, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. <sighs> That is and That's course, a certified classic. That's, a that's classic. like I feel like that's like one of them undeniable classics. It's a de definitive album, Oof. the most influential of this decade I've heard around in blogs and like that. But that is definitely a landmark. It's my favorite. That's easily his best album. Yeah. That's his best album, hands like, down. Hands down. But you know, Kanye West is is influential in that sense to me. Of course, I don't also agree with a lot of his viewpoints, ideas, presentations, whatever. Yeah. But everybody's allowed to be themselves. Of course. If we as Q plus people are asking to um be ourselves in a lot of different environments and sometimes it makes other people uncomfortable, but we ask for still the same compassion. Like, we got to do me. the same thing. That's it. We offer the same respect. It's a two-way street. That's yeah. it. That's where I'm at. That's it. That's why I don't get when people like get their panties all in a bunch. Like it's one thing to have a strong opinion, yeah. but to be like attacking somebody and like it's just like, all right, my G. Like we disagree. We could agree to disagree and exactly. keep it moving. Exactly. Like I done shown you a track record that I'm not that. So like, why you give me some benefit of the doubt? You yeah. know what I'm saying? You know. But shout out to Kanye West. So he recently put out this project. Jesus is King. Jesus is King. October 25th. 
2019. 11 songs, but it's short. It's a short 11 songs. It's 27 11 minutes. Songs. This is technically his ninth studio album. So this is his ninth full length. Throw that, throw that album cover on. What that cover look like? I mean, the cover ain't much to ride home about. You know what I'm saying? I actually like the cover, to Where's be honest awesome? with you. I like that simplistic... Um, and he's been doing that. That's been... His his bag for maybe the past few yeah, albums. Start, I remember the Yeezus joint was just the CD. It was, yeah, was the, that Yeezus, the Yeezus. It was, yeah, that was Yeezus. It was yeah, just the I CD. I like that joint. I thought I that like was pretty it. dope. And then Chance the Rapper jacked it with the, <laughs> he took the same shit. See, influential. But this just looked like this bring me back to like the old 45s. Remember the 45 oh, record? What I got. Yeah, okay. I like this one. It's I dope. I fuck, I, like it. It. I, I, mean, mean, I fuck with it. I fuck with it. I mean, but it's pretty much he dropped a gospel album. He dropped a gospel rap album. And he's not the first person to do it. Motherfuckers, it's a whole genre. Like Lecrae is out there like motherfuckers been doing gospel rap for a little while now it's def I mean Kanye came out he always had the gospel influence in his shit he always right. had like the choirs and the, the church influence and all that shit so it's always been present and been around but he really went in on this album with the whole theme and everything like every track is pretty much he's talking about you know God and religion and all of that Everybody. shit Everywhere we are, everywhere we are. It opens up like a choir, like gospel <laughs> joint. And I'm not the biggest gospel fan. And here's my thing with gospel. Gospel just always reminds me of like the church and religion, yeah, like yeah. especially like Southern Baptist churches. Uh, yeah. And that community always seemed like the biggest hypocrites to me as far as the LGBTQ community. Oh, yeah. For because sure. you got the pastors molesting little boys. Mm -hmm. Well, that's more so the Catholic church, but that happens a lot too. And the little girls. The pastors be the most grimiest motherfuckers in the church. Yeah. And then you got the choir directors who usually like the, the singers and the ones, everybody in the choir is gay, singing their hearts out, but then they getting bashed and judged mm -hmm. and they putting the most work in for the church. Like, it just always seemed like the it's biggest hypocritical shit and I always associate gospel music with that. So it was always just a turn off. But that shit, you can't deny how beautiful gospel music sounds. Absolutely. That's just some beautiful sound and music yeah. and that's the thing with this album the shit sounds amazing mm -hmm. like a lot of the production the quality of the shit the instruments he used the sequencing all of that shit it sounds beautiful but like given all of the shit he's been doing and then just you know the whole the church on Sunday shit like he got a lot going on and I think that's playing a part with how the people judging the album and that's how they're gonna receive you like you can't separate your shit from the music as much as people want to separate the person from the music we as humans don't do that shit very well yeah. so that definitely played a part in how I felt about the album but overall I was only excited about like one song maybe like all right, so I'm going to give you my grade. My grade, I gave it a mid. You gave it a mid? I gave it that mid. I gave it like like a 45, 50. So I gave it that mid. It's a okay. short project. Based on just the music quality alone, I think that could hold it down to where it's not. I mean, it ain't trash. Like, you can't, people ain't just making music like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, that alone held a lot of weight for me. But the one track that I do like, it's probably like one of the hardest tracks I heard like the whole year. <laughs> what's the whole, what's the track? What's the track? Follow God uh. is my shit. I love this fucking track. First of all, the track is only one minute and 42, 44 seconds. So it's a short but sweet, just smack you in the face. I love when people do that. I love when they leave you wanting more. Like every time I play that shit, I got to replay it because I don't feel like I heard mm -hmm. the beat long enough. Like mm -hmm. I got to run it back. So first of all, it's one of those. He giving you that vintage J. Mm -hmm. He got that vintage soul sample with them hard drums, and then the flow. He just give you that type like niggas on the right, right. He was like, what did he say? He said, people know you most push your buttons like a tight right. right. I ain't gonna. Yo, he was on that yay yay. I miss. He that give line. me. I miss that yay. Miss See, that. you ain't even hit. But that's the yay that, that I love and fuck with. And that is what rapping is. ass yay yeah. with them soul samples and them hard beats. This is one of the hardest songs I heard. Period. But I it's never, on a trash album. I, I didn't really fuck with the album. I never thought he lost it. To be honest with you, but you it's know. just the presentation of this shit it's now. Like I haven't really been. Like I don't get. I need an album album full of those. Okay. That's what I want. Like, fuck all that other, like, fuck that. Even if you just give me an EP, like, an eight-track EP full of those. That's, that's Give me that. That's mixtape Kanye. Like, that's what I'm saying. Was, remember I want that can't shit. Tell me nothing we haven't tape. had that in so we long that, that it's time for him to bring that yay back. And it that's what I was nice. looking for. But that song carried my whole fucking <laughs> grade. If it wasn't for that song, this should probably be a Reggie for me. Easy. Ooh. Easy. Ooh. With the sound and the quality and the production, that one song brought it to a mid for me. Ooh. But then, so this is kind of one of the drawbacks for me was use this gospel. 
Oh. The Clips joint with uh-huh. Kenny G. Now you hear Clips is back right. for the first time. And anybody who know the history of the Clips know the history of the Clips. Yeah. Like this is a big deal to if have him on the know, same song you know. now in 2019. Right. And you got Kenny G. Like who don't fuck with Kenny G? It's Kenny G. Like it's Kenny G. I've been. But cool. then I hear the song. So I like the song when it start off. It start off the beat got that. You know when you got a car and you leave the door open? <laughs> yes. Yes. I swear to God, That's I think this is game. the exact sound. It's I think it's the same. It's like, boo, It's a car alarm. Boo. It's a car alarm. But the shit sound hard when it's rocking and then it come in with the instrumentation with the, yeah. and he ain't got no drums. But then Kanye come in, he on his singing shit. So it's like, all right, he ain't spitting anyway. He ain't got no drums. Boom. Okay. Cool. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Cool. Uh, then Pusha come in. Yep. And he still ain't give me no drums. Like, come on, man. Like, I want to hear that car alarm with the drums. Like, give me that over push. So first of all, is that he ain't get push no drums. Then push only got eight bars. And then it's like push verse ain't really sound like like the flow wasn't giving me the good synergy with the 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 car alarm. And it was just <laughs> I just ain't like the way this shit sound. And then malice came in. No malice came in. And he still ain't give me the drums. I'm like, yo, you gonna let both of the clips spit? Ain't give me no drums. And then he dropped everything. Let Kenny G come in after mm-hmm. the clips. Killed the solo. Yeah. And yeah. then you gonna bring in the drums <laughs> when nobody's spitting. <laughs> yo, I was so upset with this entire song. Like, I was upset. Oh, this whole song shit. was a disappointing to me. So <laughs> that right. that's my take on it. What you got? I'm done. Uh, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, tell you how you really feel, man. Rapper, tell them how you really feel. Damn. Am I wrong though? Tell me when you see the lies. I mean, what did you think? What did you grade? What you graded? Hi, my name is Quan. I'm from New Rochelle. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it know. Why are you so mad? Yo, remember? So what mad. is that from? I used to love that skit. <laughs> Biggie. Oh, it was that's life my after shit. death. I'm All right. New Rochelle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What did you think? Okay, this album did it for me. Did it? <laughs> it really did. Oh, shit. This album is loud for okay. me. It's okay. loud. I gave it a 72% loud. Well, look at that. Because I'm like eight out of the 11 songs. Holy shit. I thought they, most of it was bobberable because I look at I look at Kanye in a different perspective. I was expecting something different. I wasn't expecting the rapidly rap Kanye, mm. if anything. I was just expecting him to bring Sunday service to an album. Mm. And that's basically what he gave. And I have my thing about religion too. So I will not fault you or anybody that just turns him off because he's on his religious bag right now. I look at it as like, the way I interpret religion is different anyway. I ter- interpret it more in a spiritual sense. Yeah. So I skip all... The, the literal God talk that we're talking about, yeah. I look at us as God in a yeah, way. Yeah. So in that sense, that's, that's, my how, interpretation of that's it how I feel about it. That, and that's how I listen to the album. Gotcha. Salah, I like this, I like the way the, the way he's rapping on Salah. Mm. Follow God, of course. On God. My shit is everything we need with Ty Dolla Sign. That was Incomes. one of my other keys that's that I really key. liked. Yeah, I really I like that. Like that right that's my here. second one. Follow God and everything we need. It reminds me of I Am A God from Yeezus mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That, in that way. And um, let me see, what's the line? It's the line that it goes, what the fuck? The fuck is the line? Oh, going to level yourself up. It's that different latitude. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Going to level yourself yeah. up, this, that different latitude. So that line kind of really stuck out for me. And what if E made apple juice or say, baby, yeah. let's put this I mean, back he's on the saying, tree. he always saying yeah. his shit. You, you know, know what I'm that, saying? That's, that's yeah. my shit. So I, I, that's, all, that's all I need. So you gave it a loud, and what, layered, loud 70-something? 70 72. Okay. And it's layered. You know, layered layered instrumentation with the vocals. He's been doing a lot of the vocal sampling yeah. and layering that and yeah. that being the beat. And yeah. I appreciate that too. The music and, and the I, production is A1. It's A1. I like to uh, use this gospel. Mm. I wasn't mad when... I was mad. I wasn't mad about the beat coming in. <laughs> and now I think is a lot of those are my own bias. It's just like, all right, the first time I hear the clips again after like a fucking decade, <laughs> like I want to hear these <laughs> niggas hear these go. Fans. Like, Come right. on. They ain't really get to go. But I get it. Like, it, 
It just, nah, it we wasn't got, it for me. We got to go through this. Like, the ones that I didn't like, close on Sunday. I thought he was being real meta with that one because yeah. obviously Chick-fil-A is closed it. on Sunday yeah. and he's doing Sunday service. Yeah, so it's like I a get reference it. to himself. I get it. And whatever. God is, that was the other down point for me. Yeah. But that album is loud. I enjoyed it. Did y'all enjoy the album? Is there the you whole have point. it, ladies and gentlemen. That is uh, our review. A mid and a loud. So we agreed. Out of what? Five artists. We got four Q plus artists. Mm. One ally. We got one we agreed on. One we agreed and on. The, rest the of other them. ones was just kind of. Opposite. So what do y'all think? Here and there. Like we don't always agree, as you see. I'm sure y'all ain't gonna necessarily agree with us, but we wanna know y'all opinion. It's about the conversation. It's about the community. And, you know, we're talking about this music shit because we want to highlight it. We want people to take a closer ear when they listen into these projects. Because these artists put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into For these sure. projects, these albums. And you get to know these artists by listening to their music and, you know, relating to it. And certain shit might string, strike a certain chord with you. Certain shit might not. But what do y'all think? Hit us up in the comments. Let Hit us know. Herbal.t.com. It's your boy, Tone and Peasy. And that's it for the album reviews, man. That's it for the album reviews. So we got this music going on. Like, what what the fuck is going on out here in these streets? Oh, like, it's man. a lot of buzz going on. Like, it what's is, going on in the streets? There man? is a lot going on in these streets. We gotta man. see what's going on out here, man. We what's, gonna, what's going on out we here? We're gonna we gonna get right to the we're gonna cut right to the chase. For okay. A you know okay, what, what we doing? We're not gonna spend a lot of time. Um Complex Music put out a documentary called Note, uh, Notes from No Homo, Hip Hop and Its Fear of the Gay Rapper. Okay. It was published on November 19th, 2019. Mm. And uh, it basically just featured talk about LGBT artists and the proliferation of them and is it going to be accepted in hip hop now that there's so many of us coming in the game right now. And I did see it. The way I see it is... Hip hop has always been about the masculine, the hyper masculine, and the heteronormativity because it's a male dominated industry. Yeah. And so, as so, everybody's gonna be subjected to whatever the norms is of that culture. And it, eventually, it influences society as a result. So, that's the type of world that hip hop is. That's what it created. Yeah. And so, you know, that being said, we had. The evolution of it came about when it's like female rappers, they came in, you know, there's always been just a, a few of them, never never as many as the male rappers, but there's always been a few and there's always been notable ones. At one time, female rappers kind of got caught trying to appeal to the masculine culture by being hardcore and trying to adopt the the style of dress yeah. and the, baggy clothes, the culture of that. Baggy, all you, of that. Queen Latifah comes to mind. MC Yo Light. Yo comes to mind. Uh, MC Light definitely comes to mind. Rage, then what changed that? What changed that um, is Little Kim and Foxy Brown and Missy came in the game, femininity, opened the door all of, of that. Sexual, sexualization yep. And kind of a revolution kind of came forth, but it's still in a male-dominated industry, and you see certain things follow through. You know, fast forward to now, well, at least when uh, gay, a lot of rappers started coming in that were of LGBT persuasion were influenced a lot by f just seeing female rappers showing just a different lane in, way, in terms of expression. Yeah. So that is kind of a context that was built for... Uh, LGBT rappers to kind of feel like they could be themselves. And I think we would be remiss if we did not acknowledge that. Absolutely. Now, of course, there's other factors, yeah. but that might have been one of the most influential Absolutely. Ways. I mean, you look at a lot of the artists that are out now, a lot of the Q-plus artists, a lot of the out artists, in particular, like the gay males. Yeah. They look to like the Foxies, the Little Kim, absolutely, like the Nicki Minaj's. Like these are their idols. These are the people that influence them to like go out and do their thing and like, you know what I mean? Like feel comfortable just being yourself because it's just a certain amount of power that comes with being able to embrace your sexuality, embrace, embrace the shit you really like as opposed to the shit you feel like you should like because you don't want to, you know, stir the pot or ruffle any feathers. It, these course. are just social constructs that we were born into. Yeah, like we didn't make this world; we were born into it. And so this, this is, is how kind of. Dealt with, yeah, exactly. You exactly. know what I'm saying. So you know that being said, it's it's just a, a matter of adopting that freedom and identifying just identifying ourselves. And even though we may be looked at as other, because the mainstream presence for rappers is black straight males. Yeah, 
You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. But, so anybody that's not that is basically an other. You but know, that's why that it sense. comes, that's why it's so important, I feel, is to kind of just identify yourself and let people know, like, nah, I'm not just the normal, regular, like, I am a gay rapper. Mm-hmm. Like, I am a Q-plus artist. And I want that to be something that other Q-plus artists could look at and be like, oh, shit, there are more of us. There are, like, other artists doing their thing. And you can be different or you can be do whatever you want or you don't have to fall into the typical, you know, lane or style that you think or come associate with just a gay rapper or whatever. Like, you could be whatever you want. But like- that's more like a label. It's more like a... a a, a, a sub-genre or a sub-label to just go and Google. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, that's pretty much all it that's is. A it. label, like, you you want a label on your food so you know, like, all right, if you're allergic to it. some shit, you might not want to listen to some shit or eat some shit that got yeah. that in it. You know what I'm saying? And it's also a deterrent for people because a lot of, everybody don't fuck with the Q Plus community. It you is. know what I'm it's saying? Like it's that. people that hate us. So mm-hmm. it is what it is. Look, you got, got the label on it, don't waste your time. I'm a Q Plus artist. You ain't got to fuck with me. Don't waste your time. Don't listen to it. I know you're not going to be into it. It's a I'm talking about my life. You know here. what I'm saying? That's just, that's part of, that's just part of uh, society, that in general, as far yeah. as we have to label ourselves, but we don't necessarily want to be... It shouldn't be that big of a thing. Like, a we thing. have to label ourselves because of the way the society is because constructed. That's how because it's it, yeah. not the norm. So we got to be like, all right, straight people don't have what to label is. ourselves because that's the default. That's that the norm. The default. You know what exactly. I'm saying? It starts there. I but like, it is, what did you think of the documentary? I like when Trinidad James and brought up his speaking with Young Thug and about mm. wearing a dress and that was very adopting interesting. Yeah. something that is outside the norm like that. And he said... Something, let's see, real interesting, let me see. He said, I don't have to, just the whole mantra is, I don't need to explain myself um, unless I choose to. You know what I'm saying? Just if you want to wear it, if you want to wear the dress, do it. Don't, you don't have to explain yourself. And I think that's kind of what we're coming into right now. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like we just kind of being ourselves. Yeah. And you either accept it or you don't. We don't always have to. Interview or talk about what we're doing. Let everybody Show else and prove. Let yeah. everybody else decide. And it's really all about the talent at the end of the day. Absolutely. That was a highlight for me as a whole. I thought the documentary was pretty well put together, and they got some interesting perspectives. And shout out to Brian for cu- for coming in and sharing his story. Yeah, that was huge. They as had well. him up there like at the birth of hip hop and all yeah. that. That was dope. He did have like the majority of the fucking documentary. But you nah, hate him. You hate him. I mean, <laughs> but shout out to him anyway. You know, check out Brian's music. He is a definitely prominent Q plus artist. He's, he's on out the top here, fifty, and he's on the top fifty. He's yeah. been out here for a while, and you know, I. I definitely appreciate, you know, just Complex doing something like that. At the end of the day, you know, if you're trying to learn about LGBT culture and you're trying to follow um, follow us or trying to just be learn ways to be a little bit more accepting, just understand that, you know, when we're out here talking about pronouns, we're talking about marching out here and we're showing our colors and things like that, all it really is is about the compassion. We just want to be respected. And if you want to be respected, respect us as well. And yeah. it's supposed to be, a, it should be a, a two-way street. And that's what I got from it at the end of the day. And respect is earned, man. You got to carry yourself a certain yeah. way to be respected. You carry yeah. yourself in a respectful manner to be respected. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But definitely dope, definitely important to the community. So that's what's going on here. That's what's going Out on. Out in these streets. Before we go, I wanted to mention, we talked about this earlier, um, my album Ethos. You hey, know. let them know. Ethos is my anthology album for the 2010s, so it is out. It came out on Black Friday, November 29th, you know what I'm saying? And it is basically PZ 101. So go out there, get that album. Every song has an empowering message. I launched my website with it, ikp.me. It includes a new song featuring the members of the Alliance. Hey. We got that Day Ones on there. Hey. Billy Hood, Swanee River. My man Earth Tone of is course, here. You know what I'm saying? How to represent because, you know, they're part of the whole PZ universe as it is. And the, at the end of the day, the album is just about celebrating all your wins because nobody's going to celebrate you unless you celebrate yourself. And that's why I'm out here really doing it like this anyway. So get into this world. Get into this life. Get into ethos. It's hey. out there. Support 
all Q Plus artists, all Q Plus, as well as myself, as well as Earth Tone. We putting out this work. We putting in this this energy. We giving you this good life, and you know that's where we at, and that's in these streets, in these streets. So, hey, thank y'all for rocking with us for the Herbal Tea Podcast. I don't know. I feel like I might need a little break. You know what I mean? Like, take a little walkie walk. Yeah. I'm yeah. feeling the same yeah. way. Yeah. I'm feeling the same hey, way. Hey, stay tuned, man. But I hope y'all appreciate us. Listen, hit us up in those comments. Let us know what you think. We want to hear these opinions. We know y'all got some strong opinions. That's one thing about the Q Plus community. We are very opinionated and we tend to be very hard on each other. And it's good. You know what I'm saying? You got to learn from it. Those debates are healthy. Mm-hmm. It's what we are here for and is the main reason and behind this podcast. So we want to shine a light on the Q Plus community. And y'all hit us up. Let us know. And if y'all got some music, new music coming out, hit us up. Send it to us. Send us the links. Add us. All of that stuff. We for sure. It's all love at herbal.pod.t.pod. I fucked it up again. T, dot, herbal dot dot t, t, dot pod. Pod. The Herbal Tea Podcast with your boy Tony Peasy. You are ready. Oh shit. How did we end up here? How did we? What? <laughs> Look where we are. Look at that. Yo, we in the smoking section. That's crazy. I was exactly. just thinking like, damn, like, I'm trying to light this motherfucking clip, but I don't know, because you know you can't just be wilding out. Anyway, you got to know where you smoking at. You can't just smoke. It's getting better. Mm-hmm. Like, I smoke pretty much anywhere. I don't, I don't, but I don't advise that for everybody because you got to know what you're doing. You got to know how to be low. You got to know how to keep it moving. What I'm trying to understand is like he was took he was looking for this blunt, this this L earlier, and he did not find it. So he went to the store and we already smoked the L before he even left. Because I rolled another one. And he just happened to find it. it. And I'm like, you just packing extra. Is that what you do? You just pack extra? I didn't really pack extra. Just in case? It wasn't really an extra type thing. It was just, I thought I smoked it. So it was like, Mm -hmm. that was going in my mind. So I rolled another one. Mm-hmm. And then when I went to the store, I was like, oh, shit, look at that. I didn't smoke it. So it was a pleasant surprise. Shout out to all my smokers out there. This is the smoker's life. I mean, it like, is, this is, you, and I'm you new smoke, to you know what happens. You I'm know new to this. So I'm fucking learning right here. But I've observed. And I'm going to ask questions. We're bringing you along. But so speaking of questions, the question for today is. When was the first time you smoked? Mm. Haven't thought about that in a while, have you? I have not thought about that. When, when was the first time you smoked? If you, I mean, I'm assuming all my smokers that you in the smoking session, so I'm sure you smoked. When was the first time you smoked? I'm trying to think the first time I smoked. That's an <clears> interesting <throat> story, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you go first. Like, when was the time, the first time you smoked? I don't remember the absolute first time I smoked, but I do remember a situation where. I was recording for my album, my first album. Okay. And, you know, niggas around, niggas around, they, they got the weed or whatnot, and they rolling up, or they got a, um, they got a, a the pipe or whatever the fuck you call that All shit. All right, what, what era are we talking about? What stage of PZ was this? This is- was this early PZ? This is early. Team PZ? This is early PZ. This is not team PZ. I might have smoked in my teens, but probably not too much because I was about to go into the military. You can't smoke in the military. Yeah. But when I got out, different story. <laughs> so they they rolled the bong out. We smoked that. And I got, remember getting so fucking high. Like I was just freestyling all over the place. And then we ended up walking because we all got hungry. Mm. And so we took a ride to um, this chicken place. It's not... I think it's Buffalo Wild Wings. It's close by. I fuck with Buffalo Wild Wings. And we fucked some fucking chicken. I up. fuck with Buffalo Wild Wings. Like, it that's was one a of my beautiful, favorite wing spots. Yeah, it was a beautiful It's experience. like a franchise, but it's still, like, it's official. Listen, I was... I think I had recorded... I don't know. It might have been one of my earlier songs. I think it was the session for Let It Be Known, which is one of my earlier singles. So you were just with the homies? I was just with the homies, the producers. They always smoke. And, and they smoke. smoke. And I never, I had not spoken that much until that point. But you smoked before? But I had smoked, but I just don't so remember. I don't remember the first time. It was time. that long ago. Okay, was I, that long ago. I don't remember that experience, but I do I remember am. certain experiences. That's my, my memories are kind of selective like that too. Like some shit I'll be remembering to the T and I'll be like, damn, I don't know how I remember that. And then some shit I'm just like, dog, I don't, I don't remember that shit. But I definitely remember my first time. My first time was 
teenage time, like I didn't, I didn't smoke, drink, I didn't do any of that in high school. I, I was a late bloomer to the party. But my senior year, me and a couple of my high school homies, well, I had one homie in my circle that smoked. He was like the rebel. He was the only one that used to come over to New York because I'm from Jersey. So we wasn't just coming over to New York City just to chill. We were chilling in Jersey. We had our spots. You know, we were teenagers, whatever, whatever. It was a trek as a teenager to get out to New York. Like, you wasn't just, it wasn't just a hop, skip, right. jump. Like, you had to make an effort. But he was doing this regularly. So he was like, you know, he was a little bit more seasoned than we were. Okay. So he knew the spot. He had to connect. And he, we was like, yo, fuck it. Tonight's the night. We seniors. We about to graduate soon. Let's fuck it. Let's do it. It was three of us. Uh, me and, and three of my homies. So we had the whip. I think, I forgot who got the whip. I think I was able to get the whip, bar, bar the whip. Like we had all just got the L. Mm -hmm. So we just got our licenses. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know if that's the word. Licenses? Driver's licenses? Yeah. Is it driving licenses or license? License. If it's license, multiple. What's the plural? Well, if you have multiple driver's licenses. I'm saying we had our licenses. Yeah, so that's what you would say. Plural, yeah. It just sounds funny. I don't know right. if I ever said that shit, but if that's a tangent. You. But yeah. anyway, <laughs> so I think I, I I had the car. I was able to borrow it. And we was like, fuck it. We going to go get it. My homie knew where the spot was. We went to the spot. It was like a little, you know, a little apartment building. You had to go in the back alley. So we parked the car. He get out. He go do what he do. Okay. Copped it. Boom. We like, we good. We got the, the we copped like a grand. It was like a dime. We had to go to the stash spot for the ground. We had to go to the stash spot. Five you know what State Street. Exactly. Facts, exactly. Mm -hmm. So we had to go get that. Facts. Ran and got that. We had the blunt. So we like, all right, we're going to roll this shit. So I'm thinking, you know, my homie smoke. Ooh. The hit? That one hit right there. I mean, we you can't be in the smoking session and not be smoking. And not be smoking. But so my homie, he smokes. So I'm like, all right, you the pro. You going to roll up. We about to get this shit in. We hype. None of my other homies smoked before, so this is their first time, too. We with the vet, and he don't even really know how to roll. So that's the thing about weed. Like, you got weed, but how do you smoke it? How do you consume it? There's different ways to consume weed. So you got right. vaporizers. You can roll it in a blunt, which is, you know, the, the leaf. You can roll a paper joint. Right. You know what I'm saying? You could use a bong. You could use a piece. He was like a piece smoker, so he had a little pipe, one hitter. He wasn't really a blunt smoker, so right, he's right, stunting. Right. You know, we knew he smoked, but he ain't really smoked blunt. So this is kind of like his first count rolling a blunt. So he rolling the blunt, shit was ugly. So it was all y'all first Nasty times. Man. Pretty much, kind of. Not first time smoking for him, but his first time smoking a blunt. Mm -hmm. So he rolled a blunt, shit is ugly. But we like, fuck it. We done <laughs> smoke this shit. We done did all of this shit. This shit was a journey at this point. Yeah. We done, you know, it was a mission. Shit was ugly. We started smoking that shit. It was pulling, but it wasn't. It was kind of like, I don't know. But I don't remember getting high. Like, I don't remember being like, oh, shit. Like, I feel like we had some dirt our first time. Ooh. Yeah, I feel like it might have been some dirt. It, was, it definitely wasn't that that fire. Like, it wasn't no... It wasn't high grade, nothing. I it, it was at mid, at very best. I mean, but I don't remember getting... I feel like the my first year that I really was smoking weed, like, every experience somebody had really good weed but it's usually because i was around a whole lot of white people okay and privileged kids yeah because we went to we're, we're talking about like i was in full cell university that's why i was going to get my degree to study recording arts and whatnot so i'm around a bunch of music kids yep. and they you know, it's they expensive access. school it's all about access yeah so they're going it's going to be rich kids they're going to have access to that loud that yeah. real loud yeah so every time they smoking blunt they smoking bongs they smoking vaporizers they smoking yep. bowls and they're not, not smoking blunts. Like, they're not really smoking blunts. They don't fuck with blunts. That's what they don't really know how to do it. Blunts is more like a black thing. Like, yeah. Black niggas smoke blunts. Yeah, yeah, that'd be it. The bongs, the the dabs, the pieces, the pipes, the one hitters. Like, I do all that shit too, but mm -hmm. it's nothing like blunts. Like, I always smoke blunts. But going to college, that's when I really got put onto the other shit. Like, that was my first time smoking, like senior high school. But once I went to school, and was like around the motherfuckers that do it for real, for real, like bongs, all that shit. That shit was like, that's when I got turned down. Ended is... up going to Amsterdam, all that shit. That's gonna be a story for another session in the smoking section. Yeah. But yeah, it was it was crazy. Oh man, I remember smoking the gravity bomb. Oh, so you bringing up all types of shit. See, you going too deep. You I going too deep. That. See, all right. I think I had enough. <laughs> we got to stop passing this shit. I think we've been in the smoking section long enough. Yeah. 
And we're going to take it down a notch before we get too high because y'all not ready for all of that. Y'all but not ready for this. Is what y'all this is what we're doing. We're going to be bringing you all types of tidbits, all different angles and perspectives. We're going to be getting into the business side. Mm-hmm. We're going to be getting into the political side. Mm-hmm. All cannabis talk, all 420. All for the culture. You That's what, what you want. That's what you want. That's what you need. That's what we do in the smoke says. Mm-hmm. Herbal tea. You know, herbal, herbal tea. had to come in somewhere. We got. Come on, we think the herbal. Duh. Tea. They don't know. They don't they know yet. But we'll hey, let them know. Till next time. Facts. As always, we like to end on a high note. High note. Peace, y'all. Peace. You know that from coast to coast, where there's dope, there's hope, where there's dope, there's hope. Shh, wait, is it?